All right, in this video, we're going to install the steering rack in the Superlight Coupe chassis. And essentially, you know, this is sort of the job at hand. So if I zoom in, if I zoom in here, I have to cut a two and a quarter inch hole centered on that dot there, and then drill out four three eighth inch holes that thread into the steering rack. So I'm just going to double check and make sure all these holes are marked appropriately and then I'll drill them out and mount the steering rack. This should be a pretty easy job. Uh, also, you know, I've got to do this because of the way my car was shipped. You know, folks that are getting rollers from Superlight, this is already installed for you. All right, so I'm trying to get the as accurate a measurement as I can the distance between this bottom bolt and the center of the the steering you know this the 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 pinion gear and look at this you were off by just a little bit so I'm just gonna I'm going to counter punch a hole and, and do a pilot hole and then and then drill out the two and a quarter inch circle that'll line up with this and then I'll probably move these in about an eighth of an inch and, and drill those holes out. So I think this will work out well. Okay, well, we've got a, a new pilot hole there. So I'm going to drill out the two and a quarter inch, and then we'll, we'll see exactly where the steering rack winds up uh, being placed. Okay, well, this did not go according to plan. So the pilot drill... Uh, broke, snapped, and it took a big gash out of the front of the chassis. Uh, and uh, this is probably why. First off, I'm using this monster drill. This drill is like 8 amps, and I bought an 8 amp drill uh, for the easy car lift because it uses a high amperage uh, drill to raise and lower the car. And then uh, and put a new pilot drill in and then this is the hole saw i was just you know it started to feed on the pilot drill and i didn't realize i was i was just going way too fast with the drill and the teeth uh bit into the aluminum and that was it i should have put some oil on it i should have went slow uh, but what are you going to do so i'm going to cut this hole out and then i'll, I'll sand that area out and and make believe this mistake never happened. But anyway, live and learn. Okay, well that worked much better. Just going slow, a little oil. I'm gonna sand that area down because it, it, it sort of makes me sick to look at it. But hey, I had to man up and, and uh, admit, you know, a mistake here. So it is what it is, we move on. Okay, well this don't look too bad now. Uh, you know what, when I, when I screw up on the next thing, I'll, I'll forget about this screw up, but hey, what are you going to do? Uh, anyway, I'm going to just sort of smooth this out with a Dremel. We'll see how it aligns with the 3 8 inch holes, and we'll complete the install. Okay, well, I drilled the, the top hole on the right side, and let's see, a couple things. Uh, you know, this TIG ridge here, you know, similar to when I mounted the uh, brackets for the suspension pickup points. This is really interfering with, with the steering box. Uh, so I marked this with the black magic mark and I'll grind some of the weld away and then we'll fit it up. The other interesting observation here is that it now looks like that, that hole is pretty much dead on where it didn't appear to be. Uh, so that's sort of interesting, but you know, we'll take it one step at a time. Okay, well, I didn't have to grind much down. Sort of zoom in here. I just uh, sort of bevel the, the ridge there, and that's enough clearance for the steering rack. So I'm going to reattach the steering rack and just double check where the hole needs to be on the left side or the, the passenger side of the foot box. Okay, well, I tried to mount the steering box and close, but no cigar. It turned out the larger hole, you know, I moved over a smidge, an eighth, sixteenth uh, of an inch. I probably needed to move it over an eighth of an inch. So I outlined this area in green that I have to remove. And the tool of choice 
is the infamous Tyrannosaurus Rex bit. So if you watch the alternator fabrication saga, well, this, uh, this tool uh, certainly knows how to carve out metal. So I'm gonna use this in a drill bit. I'll shave that area down and then use a sanding drum uh, just to clean it up. Okay, well, with the Tyrannosaurus Rex bit and the sanding drum, I was able to create enough clearance and it looks like this hole is dead on. So I'm gonna drill this top hole and we'll see how it lines up and then I'll drill the bottom two holes and then we'll move on. Okay, well the end result is as good as I could get it and actually you can see here, that's my electronic level, it's dead on. Dead on, perfectly level. But this was a comedy of errors. Uh, you know, I didn't film every little twist and turn here but the end result was when I drilled that upper right hand uh, hole the hole was actually, uh, you know, marked where, where I thought it was relative to my measurements. But when I drilled it, even though I did use a pilot drill, for some reason I was, I was just not careful and the drill wandered off to the right. So the whole steering rack was shifted a little bit to the right. And then what I thought was, uh, you know, the whole on the top left would visually line up and be centered with the steering rack. It turned out after I drilled it, it, it wasn't lined up. So the holes were too far apart and I started to slot the holes. And slotting the holes, the holes sort of were, were not perfectly uh, parallel or level to the floor. They, they sort of angled up on the right side and angled down on the left side. So. I almost started to lose it and what saved me was the half inch Christmas tree bit. So I took those holes from 3 8 inch to a half inch and I'll, I'll show you this when I take the rack off. Uh, but I, uh, I just had to make the holes a little, a little larger to get uh, some adjustability there. I didn't want to do it. Then I uh, traced, that's why you see the blue dye, I traced the the outline of the pillow block uh, with, uh, you, you know, with the scribe, and then I figured out where the lower holes needed to be. I drilled those to three and a half inches. They were, there still wasn't enough play to get the, the steering rack to thread, so I drilled them out a half a millimeter uh, to 10 millimeters, and that worked good. I, I probably should have oversized the holes on top a little bit. And I think the main reason is I, the, the drill bits I'm using, they sort of have a built-in pilot hole and they just don't seem to, to drill very straight. I mean, uh, on a mill press, they drill fine, but with the hand drill, I think using the pointy, just the pointy uh, drills work better. But anyway, as you can see, I mean, it's, it's dead level or now it's saying 0.01 or point, well now it's point zero zero. So it, you know, it's in there well. Uh, let's see, down here, I actually have to make a little bit of a, a mounting plate out of aluminum and I may have that welded in to take up the gap. And that's actually the way, uh, the way the other, other builders build the car. Okay, so, uh, so stay tuned for the next segue. Okay, well here are the holes I drilled. Boy, when I started this video, I thought this would be would be a piece of cake and you know it just shows you when you're new to this stuff you got to be really careful but you can see the top hole is a little wider it's uh it's a half inch hole and then the bottom hole is 10 millimeters you know ideally i would have liked both these holes to be 10 millimeters but you know just uh due to my inexperience it wasn't to be you know, look, it's not the end of the world. I mean, I'll get plenty of clamping force. The other thing is, yeah, you know, if I did really make a mistake and I, and I, I couldn't use those holes, I would, uh, I would have uh, somebody come and weld those holes uh, holes up, and then I'll re-drill them. So that's what people do when they, you know, when they change their design or whatever on these kits. So it's really pretty forgiving. Uh, it's just I like it to come out perfect and. Uh, you know, here, there was the first mishap. I, I don't even think about that anymore. I was so consumed with getting these holes to line up. 
Uh, but I think I'm in good shape. Uh, the next thing is we're going to take this uh, this piece of aluminum, and I'm going to make a uh, you know make a platform for the uh, steering box, and the steering box will you know get mounted through the the top of the extended foot box, and then we'll call it a wrap on the uh, steering rack installation. Okay, next step is to sort of place this uh, platform underneath the steering box. You know, I originally ground out the weld because I thought, you know, this box sat on top of here, but it, but it turns out it doesn't. Uh, so what I'm going to do is finish grinding out that, that weld uh, ridge behind, uh, you know, behind the steering box so this uh, plate can shift back a little bit then I'll drill holes in it and this will be firmly mounted to the box. Okay, so that's the next step. Okay, well the final step in the process here, I'm going to drill out that uh, mounting plate and also drill out the extended foot box. I, I put away the 8 amp uh, drill for the easy car lift and I'm going with the, the more forgiving uh, battery operated drill. I got this extended uh, length drill just for this purpose. I get all this stuff from McMaster car. I'm actually located not far from my house, so it makes it easy to find all these bolts and, and tools, etc. So anyway, let's drill this out. We'll see how it comes out. Okay, well that came out okay. All right, you can see it goes all the way through. So I'm going to put a bolt there and clamp it down, and then I'll drill the other three out. Uh, that went quite well. Okay, well, I had to change my technique a little bit. The drill I bought, the extended drill bit, uh, basically is not tall enough to get to the holes closest to the chassis, so I really bought that for no reason. But it turned out in the house, I actually had a 5 16th inch bit to do some snaking uh, many years ago. So check this puppy out. Now that's a serious drill bit. So I just took the steering rack off. Uh, just to play it safe, I, I didn't want to have this drill wobble and, and carve out the inside of the holes on the steering rack. So I'm just taking this nice and slow and we should be in good shape. Okay, well that came out good. I'm actually glad that I, I took that steering box off. I mean, that big long bit certainly uh, flexed quite a bit, but those holes came out really nice. Uh, this is the quality of work that Joel K uh, strives for, so I think I'm getting back on track here. This has uh, been a roller coaster, but we're just about wrapped up. Okay, well, I've uh, tightened up the steering rack. I didn't torque it down, uh, just due to the fact that I may wind up re-drilling those top holes, you know, have them welded and re-drill them. You know, look, at the end of the day, I mean, this thing fit together, fits together perfectly. I mean, I have that plate uh, that I machined and, and that, you know, that works really well. That fit like a glove. Uh, the steering rack is on there rock solid. You know, look, those top two holes are only an eighth of an inch larger than they were supposed to be. It may turn out to be no issue. You know, I'll speak to some folks that are more knowledgeable than me before I make a decision. Uh, also, the other thing is I, I switched to these, these bolts uh, to attach the pillow blocks that have the integrated washer. I'll still use a thin washer underneath, uh, but they increase the clamping force. So, you know, that, that simple change may overcome the fact that those top two holes are a little wider. Uh, let's see, what else, what else can I, I say? with regard to wrapping this up. You know, look, if you're a new builder and, and you're sort of watching me struggle with this installation, you know, fear not. Uh, first off, this would all be done if you ordered a super light uh, car today. They install all these components and then you simply disassemble to get familiar with the car and then reassemble it and torque everything up. Uh, also, you know, I did mention this aluminum is very forgiving. So, you know, any mistake you make, I mean, you simply could have someone weld the whole shut and start over. So it, it's really no big deal. But, you know, all in all, it came out good. It's perfectly level. 
and uh, we will move on on the build okay so thanks for watching and take care